Andy, if someone listening to this podcast is personally affected or knows someone who has a chronic illness that may be Lyme disease and they haven't been able to get uh, the right diagnosis and the right resources, where would you point them? What What is left uh, yeah. with the way these doctors have been disciplined and many driven out of practice? Yeah. Well, that's a it's a great question and it's a difficult question because so uh, knowing what I know now, if if you know anything uh, sort of questionable comes up, like like you mentioned the the son of a friend of yours, a young person who's diagnosed with ALS, who was an avid out outdoors person, immediately I would say I would think about Lyme disease. I would say they need to be checked out for Lyme disease. But the problem is you can't just say get tested, get a Lyme disease test, because the tests aren't accurate. The conventional tests are not accurate. We didn't even touch upon that, but that's part of the, that's part of the problem, is the testing is so, is poor. Um, There are a few specialty labs that do a better job, but there, if you go into, to to, to most uh, physicians' offices, they're not going to know about those labs, and they're going to order a test, which is maybe 50% reliable at best. So you can't just say get tested. I think the best thing to say to people who, um, who are interested, who, who are concerned about their own health or, or someone they, they care about, is to um, educate yourself. Our web, website has a lot of resources. That's underourskin.com. We have a resource section that will point you to other Lyme disease uh, groups that can help with uh, questions of testing, that can help with questions of prevention, that can help with questions of how to find uh, a, a physician. So there are advocacy groups out there, um, but, but people have to do the work. The problem here is, and this is really a whole shift in our paradigm, we need to, we need to know that we can't just walk into our doctor's office anymore and expect to get the answers. We need to find them ourselves. Many of my listeners are activists, and some of them have checkbooks. Um, where would you direct them? Well, we are in the midst of our outreach and distribution campaign for the film. The film is in limited distribution, limited theatrical distribution right now. It's uh, playing in different cities throughout the country. Um, and um, it will be here in the Bay Area in September. 17, uh, uh, September 18th, we're opening at the Kabuki Theater in San Ref- in Sausalito and on the well, Kabuki San Francisco San Francisco right. and in uh, San Rafael we're opening at the Rafael Theater mm-hmm. on the 23rd of um, of September um, we need support we need we need help to help to, to get the message out to continue our outreach and distribution efforts to launch our educational campaign we want to bring bring the issue into schools and universities and also make an impact in medical schools as well. Mm-hmm. So um, Open Eye Pictures, which is, has produced the film, we're a nonprofit um, film and video production company, and we welcome any contributions because we really need it to, uh, to create awareness around this issue. And people can find a link at underourskin.com? Correct. Mm-hmm. Okay. And a little bit about you, Andy. Uh, what's your filmmaking background, and uh, what are you proudest of, of the work you've done over the years? Well, my background is in film and uh, cultural anthropology. I actually have a master's degree from USC in visual anthropology. So that's using, using film, using the visual media to explore culture and cultural ideas. Um, so it's sort of it's a little eclectic. Most people sort of scratch their head when they hear visual anthropology, but it's it's something that informs my work. It's 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 a sort of understanding that that you can't just learn about a topic just by skimming the surface. That you need to go deeply in and um, become what what uh, what we say in anthropology is a, a participant observer. So to get as close as you can to the material. Uh, so it's all about the, the intimacy of, of the work for me. And I think that's something that, that, um, that defines, defines my work today. Even though I'm not calling myself a visual anthropologist, a lot of those ideas are really important to me. The mm-hmm. ideas of, of, of intimate involvement, 
of compassion and also reciprocity, giving back. That you're not, we're not just taking from um, our subjects and the community, but we're giving back. And that really is informing um, the, 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 the effort behind this film as well. Mm -hmm. That it's not just making a film. Yeah. It's not just making a movement. It's it's being part of a, a greater movement. So that's that's very important to me. And I think the thing I'm most proud of right now, I'd have to say, it really is this film. When when people say your film saved my life, I mean, it can't get much better than that mm -hmm. in terms of 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 both giving and getting. We've been talking with Andy Abrahams Wilson again. Under our skin is the film, and you can go to underourskin.com to get the information that we have referred to. You really, um, you really opened my mind. You changed the way I thought about these issues. And I have a great uh, sense of, of compassion for the people who have endured this. And I think you're also creating a, a new uh, wave of activists, of people who will see this and see the need to take action. Thank you very much, Andy. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this edition of the Peter B. Collins Show. Your feedback is welcome. Email me, Peter at peterbcollins.com. Happy trails. Happy trails to you Until we meet again Happy trails to you